Good evening, I'm Joe Abril. Philip Johnson made his worldwide reputation as an architect designing glass houses and soaring modernistic skyscrapers of glass, brick, and concrete. Buildings like this and this. This perhaps is what Dade County had in mind, Mr. Johnson, when it hired you to design a new cultural center for downtown Miami. And as I, I guess you're aware, there's been some controversy generated by your design. Yes, I've uh, heard rumors about the controversy. I'm absolutely delighted. I've never been in a town where there's so much talk about architecture. You know, we, we, get, we tend as architects to think that nobody's, nobody loves us. Um, I don't suppose you get that in your profession, but uh, it's very nice when the town gets all excited. Well, let's show them what we're talking about, and as okay. we show them, we'll, we'll tell them when it was unveiled before the county commission uh, a number of weeks ago, yeah. it was some... Great doubt, yes. yes yeah. I think they were slightly surprised to see that the overall effect uh, was rather uh, what you call in Southern California Spanish. Right. Actually, of course, it isn't, but... Uh, now, we're looking at what will be the Flagler Street... Flagler Street entrance. It's a little hard to tell in the little home screen, but it's uh, mainly palm trees in the view here, and you're looking up the ramp that goes up. You can see the uh, windows climbing up to, to the left of the slide. I, I've heard it described as an Italian prison and all kinds of... <laughs> no. Like uh, no, it is, the style is vaguely Tuscan. It's completely modern, by the way. It's, it's an idea... It worked out that I've been dreaming about for many, many years. And uh, the planning is the most modern, functional, um, easy to clean, easy to uh, low energy consumption and all the proper things. Let's look at another view of it. Yes, this now. is the view from the, uh, the top of the ramp looking at the library on your left, the large building. Mm -hmm. And on the right is the uh, history museum and right in the middle is the little restaurant. And this this is all the plaza in the middle the of The plaza is what you, what you look out into from the uh, covered right. entry walk. Okay. Yeah. How, how does it feel to be controversial uh, here? Uh, oh, it couldn't be better, you, you see, because right here is, uh, is the impulse for this particular design. We believe very much, we modern architects now, and the newer, younger modern architects, of which of course I'm a prominent member, uh, we feel it's very important to do appropriate architecture. Now these buildings would not be appropriate for Boston, mm -hmm. or Cleveland, or New York, but for here, uh, we like very much the architecture of uh, Coral Gables, of the courthouse downtown, uh, of the uh, Freedom Tower, and we feel that, that is the most viable uh, continuing tradition of the South Florida area. Let's have one more view of your design now. Yeah, this is the view looking toward the Art Museum from the library arcade. Right. And the steps to the right go down to Flagler Street. Okay, we're looking north? No, we're east. looking east. East, towards mm -hmm. the bay. Towards the bay. Flagler Street on your right. That's right. The only thing missing is the courthouse. The artist never been to Miami and didn't know that the courthouse would stand right up there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you, you're obviously proud of this work you've well, done. I think right? it's one of the best things we've ever done. Now, we were talking earlier, and I was asking you that some people are were disappointed, are disappointed, because this work does not seem to match what you have done in the past. That's quite true. My uh, teacher, Mies van der Rohe, once said to me when I didn't like one of his designs, he says, your trouble is you looked at my last design and I, you like the father so well, you don't like the son. I mean, uh, as one of the members of the um, Arts Council said to me, well, Mr. Johnson, that famous glass house you built and, and you're giving us this? I mean, where's the man we hired? With great disappointment in his voice. Yeah. Well, uh, we have changed our point of view in the profession. I think it's splendid. Uh, I think architecture changes like everything else. Certainly the world changes. Mm -hmm and uh, ladies clothes changes faster than architecture but this seems to be changing back to something that was it just seems that way because you recognize a uh, a tile roof actually i believe it's a step forward toward uh, toward uh, for instance one lady said to me that lives in coral gables says well now i feel at home that's the way a library looks like now i don't know what she had in mind what a library looks like yeah but that was to her library see and i like to catch on to people's we nowadays like to catch on to people's feelings. Uh, the flat top glass house that never really appealed uh, to the domestic user, for instance, as a home. Mm -hmm. Doesn't look like a home. These buildings look like what it is, a cultural center, a piazza. Uh, you slip into the Spanish plaza or Italian piazza when you, when you think of it. And that seems only fitting uh, for this part of the world where you have palm trees. Of course, that doesn't necessarily, uh, I don't know if that's necessarily historically correct. Coral Gables was the built in the image of George Merrick, who had kind of an ersatz idea. Oh, I know. I know the whole thing is phony. Yeah. I, don't, I don't mind that. 
uh, the Colonial was pretty phony in Boston, but the Georgian architect by the time I got to Boston. But uh, I think you, you, you catch on to the tradition. There's another tradition in Miami that you could perfectly well have chosen. That's the Art Deco tradition of the southern half of yes. Miami Beach. Right. It's glorious. But uh, I just didn't feel that that was the most fitting. See, appropriateness, fitting, the word comes in to a library a complex. Well, now, I, I've heard you refer to Houston as an exciting city, I think, and you've designed for them a mirrored twin tower, which is very modern. That's very, right. That's right. The, very uh, typical of your past tower. Towers. That's right, and we're doing more. Well, now, explain to us what, what you see in Miami that you didn't see in Houston. I see in Miami a, a longer tradition. I see here a flavor. I see here a city that had an existence in the 20s, which was remarkable. I don't care that it was done by Meisner and the Merritt and uh, Coral Gables. It was, uh, it was a flavor that was very, very per pervasive and went all over here, as well as it did in Southern California, by the way. Uh, Santa Barbara is all the same style. The 20s were famous for their uh, neo, whatever you call it, uh, Mediterranean, I don't know what the word is, but it's a very strong tradition. Yeah. The, the problems of energy, how much did, impact did that have? Oh, that has enormous energy. impact. We no longer can build all glass buildings, you see. That would be morally, uh, artistically, we, it, 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 it filtrates all our thinking today. And uh, these, are, these are enormously energy-saving buildings because they have very few windows. Mm -hmm. We're actually increasing some of the windows since these early designs. And what if 10 years from now, we, though we solve the energy problem through solar energy or something, and, and we can use glass again, won't we be left with... I don't know. You see, we haven't got that few windows. I mean, when you're reading the books, your windows are going to be uh, large enough to see out. Mm -hmm. It's the windows toward the west we're not doing. Mm -hmm. We're actually increasing the windows to the north. Yeah. Does it bug you that you're being questioned on your design? Not I mean, at you're all. you're a world-famous architect. Oh, no, but that's no, the, no it's the, it's the staff of life controversy. When I first did a glass house, can you imagine? They wrote in the local paper, if Mr. Johnson wants to make a fool of himself, why didn't he do it in someone else's <laughs> town? You know, mad. You should do it at home, right? Ter yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, and uh, they were all for having me leave town at once. Well, I think that some people have expressed the, the concern that you, uh, that you, you just are aghast that Miami, which many people consider very provincial, oh, no. ha has the audacity to question something you've designed for us. No, quite the opposite. I, we're used to being attacked this time as well as the last time we were <laughs> revolutionary. And uh, John Bergie, my partner and I that you met, uh, have been working for, for years toward this uh, change, if you will, from the uh, flat, square, concrete mm -hmm. and glass boxes, factories, if you will, mm -hmm. that we use, those factories we use for houses, we use them for churches. Well, a church doesn't look like a flat top glass box, see? So once more, we're getting the emotional, the appropriateness idea into our... Well, you know, Mr. Johnson, I think we've, we've got a problem here with some concepts and words and language that are being That's used. Right. We have something called New World Center. And we have some new buildings that are in existence, which are more modern and square and boxy, right. whatever word you want to use. So the people have been led to think this is the direction we're going. And I think in the midst of that, here came your museum, which was <laughs> totally unlike that. Yes, yes. And it people are kind of, uh, they don't, they're quite confused. Well, it depends on which people. A lot of people, like the uh, young architects that uh, endorsed it first, 250 of them, a uh, unanimous endorsement for it. Uh, so there were a lot of the, of the younger people that took to it like a duck to water because it seemed perfectly natural for them uh, to make a, uh, uh, a thing that was more emotional, more warm, more uh, tasteful, more what they want to feel in this kind of a country side mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, than the flat top. So I wouldn't say they were all that shocked. Right. Do you think things have smoothed out pretty much now? I do hope so. I, I appeared bef again before the commission last week and um, they were very cordial indeed after they understood what I was trying to do. Now, there was a vote, wasn't there, that you would be agreeable to do some changes in the facade. We are what? changing. You are? Yes, we're, we're, because of the energy problem, we're doing a different fenestration. Uh, the plans, I've talked over the, all the users, and we're making adjustments. That's the way architecture is. These are not designs. These are what we call in the architecture profession schematics. Mm -hmm. That is, is this direction. And not even, we don't usually even show renderings like this, pictures. Right. It's just, is this, the, is this what you think you wanted in the way of a museum? So how, how about the, the concern some people express that, that, that <clears throat> a hodgepodge is developing here in downtown Miami? Of I'm not so worried about that. Uh, I can't look to the future because I don't know what's going to happen here with the next stage more than anyone else does. Uh, Miami, like most great American cities, started as a hodgepodge. You have Freedom Tower, but you also have the courthouse. The courthouse is very near this building, but that doesn't mean I have to build 
in that particular neoclassic uh, style. That was a, a design designed, I think, for Baltimore, wasn't it, the mm -hmm. courthouse? And there it is. You aren't going to take that down. It's too much granite to take down. No, but just because some mistakes were made in the past, I don't think is a fair reason to say let's keep making them. On the other hand, is it a mistake? I just don't yeah. know. Yeah. How much unity can you have between a 40-story uh, skyscraper and a cultural center? Well, now I'm curious. If someone asked you, Philip Johnson, as your life's great work to design a whole city, are you telling me that you'd hire other architects and let them no. do something No, totally but I think that the, the cultural center in that ideal city would look quite different from, a, from the business block uh, overlooking the bay. Right. I think it's bound to be those differences, and I think it gives a certain flavor uh, to the center of this town that it's going to be flavorful that way. Why is architecture changing? What, what have we f discovered that we didn't uh, know? Well, it's too house? long. It's too long to go into. It's very hard to see. I think we're all changing. The word uh, progress doesn't mean what it did. For instance, think small. Why does Governor Brown think all of a sudden we should think small? Uh, we used to believe in endlessness of progress. You know, now we're not so sure anymore. Okay? It's a whole different approach. We thought when modern architecture was uh, the thing to do, modern, modern architecture, the old-fashioned modern, yeah. that uh, would solve all problems. People would be, there's actually a wonderful phrase I found in the, from the 20s that said, if you have more glass, you live a healthier life. Very strange. But now that sounds very still defined to hear you say that. You're one of the, 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 the foremost design I hope designers so. in the world, and yet you're hope telling so. me that there really is no new territory to plow in architecture. That Quite the just opposite. Go back. No, we're not going back. That's what's, That's the hardest point to get across. Okay. This is a. This is an idea that's been germinating in our minds now for some ten years. This particular plaza idea, this particular arrangement, which doesn't show in the pictures, of the of the of the blocks, see, has been something that's been when deeply thought about, and uh, I have worked with arcades of this nature. Uh, before mm -hmm. and it's it, it's the change is in the receptivity and in the aim of architecture to to, to um, not to be so absolute not to say the glass box is the answer to the skyscraper to the house to the church uh, to the steamboat no. you may design another glass building in your uh, future I, we are in Houston in Houston okay but I think Houston is a well, they nouveau, have plenty of gas and oil it's well it's a nouveau <laughs> town you see yeah uh, uh, this town is bigger and, and uh, you know, in a way healthier, more balanced, you see, than, than any of those cities. But in, in Houston, it's an asparagus bed of tall skyscrapers. Form and function, how a building looks versus how it works, which is more important? Is They're both. Answer? You can't do without one or the other. Uh, the, the function of, a, of these libraries is where you always start. I mean, I went through all the plans with the library people before, there was a, before the, the form of the building came about. Mm -hmm. the, the form of these buildings is really the plaza that's, that's around them. The pleasure, that's the room. The room is the plaza, and the walls of that plaza are these four buildings. Mm -hmm. So it's an it's a asymmetric and a delightful uh, spot to be in. How did you feel that first day you unveiled the plans? There was kind of a, well, there wasn't much reaction at all, which... No, they said, we better think about this, <laughs> which I thought was mighty polite of them, since I could tell by their eyes what they were thinking. <laughs> you could tell. How'd you feel? Insulted, sad? No, no. Uh... I just said, well, we must talk some more. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I don't think I was... Uh, I didn't have a chance to explain it all that day. But I had lots of chances since. People have been marvelous around here. It's been the most delightful group I've ever worked with in my life. How are people misunderstanding what you've done here? Uh, there's the, I, I hear I you think, saying that they don't really know what you've done, and when they do, they'll understand it. No, what they don't know is the change in modern architecture that's going on among the younger people. That's why the younger architects here were easier for them to know what I was doing. Uh, but the, uh, naturally, if you're doing nothing but uh, boxes um, for many, many years, it's going to look strange to see a pitched roof again. Well, I feel we should take advantage of everything. I think the great change in modern architecture is coming about that we once again can use barrel tile vaults, uh, roofs, because it gives you one more dimension than the flat roof. Is that what this term regionalism means? Partially. I, I don't think those I like. I don't like any words. That's a problem. Here I make buildings, and we have to use words all the time. Yes, yes it is too much. Regionalism is all right. That's uh, no, not exaggerated. I don't mean every house in, in Virginia has to copy Monticello. Uh, nor does every, uh, every house in Coral Gables have to fit exactly all they try uh, to keep the barrel tight. Well, I enjoyed your, your, uh, your comment in the meeting when the first meeting. You said, let the wildflowers bloom about the different kinds of architecture. Chairman Mao, let a thousand flowers bloom. Yeah. You really think that's the way that cities that's should be? That's the way be? it's happening. 
listen. Uh, but you're making it happen. You make yourself sound like a bystander. That's not true. I am. I am. I am not influencing. Uh, I wish I could. <laughs> it's the desperate wish of every architect, and every architect inside him is a city planner, you know, that wants yeah, of to course. stamp the whole place, but uh, that's not the way it works. And I think a, a little humility and a little, um, uh, let's say, allay would be good for architects, instead of all of them knowing everything and stamping their blasted flat roof glass buildings everywhere. Well, now, some of those buildings, the, the, you and Mies van der Rohe, the, the Seagram building in That's New York. Right. Now, are you proud of that building oh, today? Oh, yes, our offices are in the building. I mean, you don't look and say, oh, my God, look oh, what I did. Oh, no, no, my own glass house, I still like it. Okay. I wouldn't, if I started a new house today, I wouldn't build that way, but uh, I wouldn't either live anywhere else. Great. Your father wanted you to be a lawyer like he was from Cleveland. Normal. Uh, Fathers yeah. are apt to want their children to Do you ever regret not being a lawyer? Uh, no, lawyers, um, I can't understand that profession. I suppose it's partly because my father was. I don't know really what they do. It's been exciting times to be an architect. Oh, it's the most exciting time in the world, especially right now, in this uh, pluralistic, shifting world. Well, a former county manager said, uh, talking about your design, he, he, he made a rather incredible statement, I think. He said, we, we, it would be unthinkable for us to reject the design of Philip Johnson. Uh, meeting you and knowing you, I don't think you would agree with that. I think you think the public have an absolute right to tell a guy they think what he did stinks. Absolutely. You know, they, uh, I'm sure they wouldn't, uh, they They're haven't been afraid that, to, but... well, they haven't been afraid to tell me, the ones that, that feel it. And uh, I welcome it all. I mean, I think without controversy, you're not going to get interest. And the interest of Miamians in architecture, partially indeed roused by my change, perhaps. Yeah. But whatever the reason, the numbers of people today interested in architecture in this town is phenomenal. I don't know any other city in the world where this really? could be true. Maybe, but right now, I'm, Miami's my favorite city. Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. Well, that's architect Philip Johnson, as you saw, a very charming man. And Miami has returned the compliment by generally approving of his cultural complex design, but not completely. We'll get to that in just a moment.